call the May 1st, 2017 Joint Local Development Finance Authority Troy Subcommittee meeting to order. Please call the roll. Chair Rob Beltramini. Here. Ellen Porterick. Here. Alternate. Paul Huff. Here. John Sharp. Here. Alternate Dane Slater. Irene Spanos. Here. Nick Vitale. Here. Quorum present. Thank you. All right. The first order of business is to annually, we do this, elect officers. The current officers are I serve as chair, Mark Miller serves as secretary. Those are the only officers we have at this subcommittee. So the chair will entertain a motion for officers. I move we retain the officers <coughs> assuming current officers assuming they will agree to serve. Is that for life? <laughs> year at a time. No, it's a year at a time. It's a year at a time. Thank you. Okay, moved by John and seconded by Ellen that the current officers be retained. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for your voting comments. We appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Um, the meeting schedule was sent to you, this meeting, and then again in October schedule. Madam Chair, just information. Yep. Yeah, we don't now. have to do anything, but put it on your calendar now. It's not like you didn't have fair warning. <laughs> And then there are the minutes of last October's meeting to be approved or amended. Chair will entertain a motion. There's a misspelling in my name, but. Well, let's fix it. And I see K. Oh, well, yes. yes. <laughs> need to be corrected to properly spell next name. Any other corrections? So move uh, motion to approve with corrections. So moved. Thank you, Paul. Second. I'll second. Thank you, John. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now, we had the discussion with Southfield and your questions were answered. Glad, glad you asked John about why they wanted to include LTU. Mm -hmm. um, now, it is our job to... This will be under the signature page. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. To pass a resolution or reject a resolution Concurring with the decision that the joint uh, the joint committee made to approve the recommendation and send it to councils for reinstatement amendment and adjustment. I move that we approve the resolution of the joint committee. Thank you. Second. I'll second. Discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Can I abstain, given I didn't hear the presentation? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got the packet. The only thing John asked was why Southfield all of a sudden now included LTU in the <coughs> boundaries. Right. Because they were always a partner. And Shelley's response was they had space for an incubator that they wanted to build out. And they didn't feel that they could use the monies to build out that space unless they included LTU in the boundaries. Because there's no tax to capture. Yeah. Right. It's a tax-free entity. OK, I approve that. That was the only way they could invest those dollars in the accelerator is if LTU is included. So. Gotcha. I know we've moved on, but um, I did want, Mark mentioned it, the uh, Port Huron mm -hmm. component is not part of this, but, but 
Where does that stand? It's not a boundary part of this. It's a partnership as part yeah. of this. It's, it was actually the motivation to get this extended. Got it. Okay. So. Yes. It, what they're called is a satellite. And by us, getting a satellite enables us to get a 15-year extension. And so they're that's right. right. Yeah. So right. our right. Where we have a joint agreement with MEDC with with Southfield. They'll have their own agreement with Port here, and we'll have their own agreement with um, MEDC. Beautiful. Thank you. But it's true, we could not do the extension without having the satellite of Port here, and we have to do a collaboration, which is all in here and reporting. And that's why I'm whining about going to Port here. <laughs> <laughs> A dinner out there or something. <laughs> There's some good places to eat there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Move across Troy. Who's talking? I'll go. So we've talked about the mid block crossing of Big Beaver from approximately in front of Altair to the retail center. Um, and this, this is actually a little related to our budget. We'll talk about it when we get to the budget. But we are moving and we have moving to design this. And you know, there is a contribution from the LDFA of approximately $125,000 in a major road just paying for, for the remaining portion. What you see here that will not be funded in the project are the bus stops. But this is, this is in design. Um, I will even say that you don't see the nuts and bolts work of the signalization on this. That, that is actually moving forward and being constructed separately from this contract because it's two different types of, um, two types of uh, work. And so when we put the bid out, I will let you know, we'll email and just notification. We have a budget of about $620,000 for construction and $91,000 for design and bidding services as part of this. Is this the artist's rendering of what you want to do, or is this a general concept of it's going to be a waiting path that goes through that? This is more than an artist's rendering. It is a rendering of what the bid specs will show, with the exception of the bus stops. We can work on separately, maybe we'll work with Smart on that. I'm just wondering the value of those panels. I, they're, they're attractive. I also see them as giant billboards for graffiti as people walk by. <laughs> What's the material? Mm. We can go grab a staff person who knows a little bit more the details. You go grab Maggie. I'm just thinking anybody with a Sharpie could paste them in a heartbeat and then we're off. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be replacing them every year. Well, and they're exposed to all the elements, so depending on the material. The color will fade, right. depending on the material. Yeah. I, and, and I sound like negative Nelly, and I'm sorry about that. But I don't know. Well, the, the purpose of it was to provide visual interest and make this a, a signature location mm -hmm. that we could carry on in other locations in the one Big Beaver. Just, this one happens to service the smart zone. And, and it's the first, and so that's kind of why I'm thinking maybe colored benches instead of. Well, we had a lot of discussion about benches. We don't want to encourage people to sit in between. Hello, this is Hi. Maggie Hughes, who works in the city manager's office, who is sort of, re not sort of, is responsible for this project. Yeah, I just got a phone call at OHM, so this is great timing. So I got some additional information for you guys. So um, I heard some of the questions were about the panels. So there are kind of two things that we're trying to accomplish with this project. One is to increase and make it safer and easier for people to walk up and down and across Big Beaver. So um, by providing people uh, north-south crossings, we think we'll really be able to accomplish that. So that's, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that it's been made evident to us um, since I've been here three years, really by the council and by the public, that they want to see more public art. Um, so they want when they walk, they want to feel like that's part of our community, that we have that sense. So we try to accomplish that. Um, both with functionality and um, with this colorful kind of art pieces. So um, what these will do is they'll kind of add protection for the walker. So again, thinking about the safety as you're crossing, but also add something um, that you really catch, catches your eye. This is the first time we're trying to do something different in the Big Beaver corridor. So we want it to catch the eyes of both drivers and walkers to encourage them to start using this. So that's kind of our intention behind the panels. Um, they also kind of go from shorter to taller and then shorter, so there's a little bit of a, um, a flow and movement design there. 
Uh, they're made out of glass, like windshield glass, so it's going to be around an inch and a half thick, and then it's going to have a, a plexiglass uh, plastic coating on it as well. So um, when we're, we're talking, you know, kind of how we're going to order these, if, if they get hit, will they break, will they shatter? I know they're really um, protective. We will obviously have some ordered back ones in case there's something um, extreme that happens with them, but they'll be wipeable, you can wipe them down, they'll be super easy to clean. Um, and so this will be they, part that's of sort of the Sharpies too. They're glass. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's what I mentioned. But you said plexiglass on the outside. Well, it's a, it's a, a coating. I, I shouldn't say plexiglass. I'm not exactly sure. It's, so it's glass with a sort of protective coating on it as well. So paint or ink won't Correct. stick. Correct. Yeah, that's the whole point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And are they the sitting on a raised? Yeah, so then they're also the, um, so it kind of starts low here and then goes a little bit higher. So that's where the shape and the movement comes in as well on that kind of concrete. Also raises them up a little bit so that it's easier for the um, snow clearing. And, and you mentioned that there was some protection. Um, yes. So it's kind of hard to see. I actually just saw a video. So one of the concerns that OHM had was, was this going to be distracting for drivers? So um, we added some additional landscaping um, in both of the corners so that it would kind of you would see it more gradually when we striking color as we're driving down the road. You'll see first the landscaping um, and then the color. So, and we're going to be angling them so that they kind of um, protect from spray. Um, it, for a walker, so they'd be angles that would hit the glass before it would hit the walker. So that's kind of where the protection comes in for the uh, pedestrian. Are those the actual colors? Um, yes, yeah, so this is actually the colors of our new logo. So uh, we're in the middle of our kind of big rebranding, and you'll see a big logo yes. launch. <laughs> yeah, this is a big logo launch will be coming out really soon. We're kind of gradually getting people used to it, and we're going to do like a big logo video and um, hopefully explain that to people. So yeah, those come from the logo. Is there a reason why there, I'm sorry, no, go is there a reason why there's a certain length? I mean, this seems like a good size length. But. Yeah, so um, it connects two things. Um, and we're also doing a traffic plan with this. So we're adding in, this turnaround is into the sports center. So we're adding in a traffic light there. So right now there's no traffic light and it's like a, it's a pretty painful exit to get in and out of. So we're adding a traffic light there, which will activate the pedestrian signal on this side. Um, there's already an existing traffic light and pedestrian, or uh, easier to put in the pedestrian signal on that side. And then this is the length of the current median that exists. Okay. So we're working within those kind of limits we have. Well, I was just going to comment. One of the things that you hear when you're on city council, you get emails from the east siders of Troy, <laughs> who constantly are comparing to the west side of Troy, which is, of course, the DDA, especially in Big Beaver. We have the DDA area. That is, there is greater upkeep and attention there because there's more dollars there. And when you lift to the east side, you don't understand that, you don't know that, you feel like the stepchild of the city. So, um, I was going to say, this is from the LPFA, actually. You guys are the LPFA. But, but no, I'm just talking the reality of what we have done down there yeah. in terms of investment on Big Beavers. So this is this is our first. Um, What's the closest main thoroughfare? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it is way west, or east yeah. side. Yeah, and this, 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 this light is the turnaround light if you went through the John R. intersection heading mm -hmm. west. Okay. It's the turnaround light. Right. And then that median goes all the way to the sports center where there isn't one, but there'll be one put, as I understand it, on the westbound side. Right. Yeah. There will be some additions to the existing light out in front mm -hmm. of Tim Hortons, yeah. but, but the stanchion is already there for the mm -hmm. traffic. Line. And this is um, uh, Altair that's located on the south side right there. And that is, um, this is really also come initiated from them. They have a really young workforce that uh, likes to walk, likes to go to coffee across the street. So we're really trying to, especially with Automation Alley, that's bringing in all of those um, high-tech young employees. Right. We're really trying to offer them something and to keep what, them what this body may not realize or know that Altair bought that vacant land of dirt right next to their property. There's about four acres, and they're going to expand their research campus and also add some lifestyle amenities for their employees and a mixed use development uh, on that nice. vacant room. So that was the second point. There is a true safety consideration mm -hmm. down there. And then the third one is, for a while I was the only woman on council and I can't tell you how many times I had people come up to me and say, what about the flowers we used to have in medians? And I don't know if you recall, but like one of the first budget sessions, um, poor Kurt, mm -hmm. Bovensleep research, you know, we had shut that down. All the water, everything during the downturn. Well, to bring that back, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. And you're talking about annuals, you know, the ability to put annuals in. And over time, I've recalibrated my brain to think about, 
you know, we live in a four season society. How yeah. do we bring that character and that flavor and that, what flowers did is they gave, gave a sense of place to different corners and areas. You know, if you look at Long Lake and Crooks, for example, and people are missing that. Well, what's the smartest, best investment way to bring those elements of art and sense of place back to the community? So it'll be interesting to see this first, you know, uh, blush of, uh, of art and how it works. I'm right with you. My mm -hmm. brain gets tangled up in, well, they could paint it. Well, annuals could have been torn up mm -hmm. by teenagers. Um, so uh, that's, um, and it's, you know, a high visibility area. So hopefully, like they asked me, do we want to put skateboard stoppers in on that concrete? And I was like, oh my God. I got we can see, but we're just gonna like you know wait and see, see how it's used, see where we need to make improvements. Um, this is actually part of the move across Troy plan. So they identified uh, three or four areas along the big corridor that um, could be easily identified and, and safe to install one of these. We're trying to make a splash for this first one, see how it's used, see if this can be easily replicated throughout the corridor. Um, I know, okay. yeah. Snow yeah. removal. Yep. So um, this plan's gone through um, our, our public works director, Kurt Rubin, seems to be really involved. Um, and so it, making sure that this plan is easy enough for their staff to get through with one of the, um, the little driving ones that they use on the sidewalks, the public sidewalks. Um, also, this is a two-phase plan. So the, what you see down here with the parking, or the bus stops, um, we're going to be taking this plan to Altair, to our business partners, um, and seeing how or if they want to partner. Um, it might be something if Altair has, you know, uh, we're going to propose if they you know, have their guys going out and doing their sidewalks, do they want to send them across? And, um, and do it the median, and that can be our partnership um, and finding ways to creatively get this project done. So we, it's, it's conducive to uh, what we use right now, but trying to figure out creative ways to, to make it cost effective. I have a question. Uh, I'm sorry. I, That's okay. Yeah. I have a question as far as, as bus service. Mm -hmm. How far does our existing shuttle go? And would there be a thought that maybe the shuttle should go that far? It, yeah, so right now it does go this far. It actually turns around just shortly past this, uh, the blue line does. So um, there's been a lot of asks to have it go even farther all the way down to the Clinder. So we're really looking for feedback from people that live that way and say, yes, we want it, bring it our way. Um, and we're in a six month trial period right now. And then after that, we'll reevaluate where the stops are and see if we want to expand or adjust or anything. So the two corners are the bus stops. Are they both there now, or will they be new ones? Uh, there are currently stops there right now. Uh, the, I should say the sports center one is actually at the sports centers because they have a nice turnaround there. Um, but uh, it is existing at Automation Alley right now, but there's no physical um, bus shelters. Okay. So we've been also in communication with SMART um, to see if we can do something cool. They can give us their old shells, and we can have like some kind of art competition to do something interesting. Um, we're trying to get creative. And secondly, yeah. um, this now obviously gives people an opportunity to cross Big Beaver, mm -hmm. uh, but there are safety concerns there. Have we checked with our insurance, and are they, is the premium going to go up, or is, no? Mm -hmm. So this is all We're, we're self-insured for the okay. most part, so yeah, so we will, yeah. And um, we've had, uh, with our traffic studies, you know, identified as the areas. There are people already crossing, so it's kind of like already a dangerous situation. This was Gonna make it's it going to be less longer. dangerous okay. than already yeah. crosses. <laughs> and this, this turnaround with now it being um, lighted is So right now it's a little like Frogger. Yes, Frogger. Yeah, we got to see how I described it. Yes. yes. We, we made a video when I first started this project and it was all set to the Frogger music and um, yeah. just kind of showing how long and how difficult it is to get across. Like we almost got hit in the video. It was like horrible but also perfect timing. I'll be, um, we'll be sure to get on the agenda in the future when we have some updates for you. I'll let you know where we're at. One last one for me. Mm -hmm. No, that's, I didn't have anything. One last thing for me. I, does it shorten the lanes at all? I mean, obviously, the, we have a lot of people coming in and out of Columbia yeah. Center, and traffic tie-ups are the biggest headaches for, yeah. for people coming in and out. Yeah, no, um, because there's already, it's already signaled there, and the signal here will be um, tied into the signal on John R. It shouldn't change any of the uh, traffic flows. Um, it'll just kind of help with the, the traffic. That You're asking about the width? But the width and all of that's yeah. all staying the same. Yeah, no, we're all, we're staying totally within the median. But pedestrians can can or cannot push a button to cross? Um, so it will be, it will be both. So if there's no pedestrian there, it might mess with the signal timing. They're going to um, work that out throughout use. Okay. Yes, it is actuated 
press a button right. and then you will then, and then time traffic will be stopped. So effectively it could slow down traffic more. Mm -hmm. Depending on we do want people to use it. Right. Yeah, it, it would be it would be not on a it would be on a pedestrian push basis. Yeah, right. sorry. Sure. What that actually uh, might do is cause the shuttle to be used more in the lunch hour when all the people from Automation Alley, the smart right. zone, are trying to get to Buffalo Wild Wings and Joe Cools for lunch. Right. People aren't gonna want to drive that section of the right there. So it might be a win for everybody. Sure at lunchtime. It, but it it's at but I don't think That's you'll the, have that many people in late afternoon crossing. I would be surprised. Okay. There are going to have to be some hard rules, though, yeah. about you can't, make, otherwise it could just close down completely yeah. if there's constantly people there. Mm -hmm. You know, though, those, those push button signals are used. I always thought they were over. fake. Yeah, and I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard all this. Yeah. <laughs> time to coincide with the rhythm of the light but it may extend it mm -hmm. just five Correct. seconds okay. or whatever that's it's going to be activated to, yeah. to kind of go with the time Madam Chair, the, the firm that's designing this is OHM. It's one of our three engineering firms, and their specialty for us is, is traffic engineering. Mm -hmm. So all those considerations are part of this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll be honest with you, the intention of this is to kind of um, stop totally prioritizing the car and see how we can make it be a little more cohesive with the So it's sure. kind of a, a trend in reality we, we're trying to balance. And as a cyclist, there's some attractiveness to being able to, to yeah, cross exactly. the beaver. And, mm -hmm. um, which is oh, wonderful. Yeah, that'd be great. Sometimes we hear people say, oh, you're going to try to create this walkability on Big Beaver and try to get people to walk. We have people walking yeah. out there. What Danger we don't problem. have right. is the infrastructure to support that activity. So we're, you know, all your questions are right spot on, and it's yeah. we're in that cultural, sociological transition here. Um, but this is way better than a bridge or a tunnel yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 The fact is, is that this, the CEO of Altair came to our city manager to say that he was worried about his, his employees doing this mid-block crossing. And think about it, they will, they will not walk 400 feet, 500 feet to John R. to do the signal. They'll risk yes. their life and they'll, they'll risk it. I mean, and so that's the other thing that these panels and the landscaping do is because, you know, they're still going to want to, okay, I can cross safely here, so now I'm just going to keep going yeah. here. Yeah. So with the buildup and the cement and the panels, it'll force people to kind of stay in that, in that safe lane. This yeah. section where the wall and the art stops mm -hmm. on the west side, mm -hmm. is that grass? Um, here? Yeah, exactly. So this is, um, this is like natural, a native ground plant. Cover. Yeah, ground cover. I'm just curious if a car was to lose control, could they get to the sidewalk, or is there something in there that would stop it? It's a good question. We have a um, it's it's uh, elevated up as well, and there's a five. We just uh, put in a five foot. They just added. They made a couple of changes to push everything in a little bit so that it's there's a little bit more coverage between kind of when the landscaping and the pedestrian areas begin in the road. So yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's a it's a possibility. Um, hopefully, we're you know. Um, our hope is that the, the mound and the, and the cement would kind of slow cars down. There are bollards at the end. Yeah. Bollards yeah. Just no, I see that. I'm just wondering if, if on the road somebody were to lose control. They, yeah. Although they'd, they'd have to go up. They'd have to go up, yeah. Five it's feet. Nice, and yeah. Quite mounted. Yeah. Good time, you guys. Just cast the phone call. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch makes sense. It all works. That's good. <laughs> Thinking about it. Anything else? No, thank you. Oh, thanks, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Well, we committed to put money to this a year and a half ago. Almost like we're carrying money, yeah. and we'll talk about it when yeah. we get to the budget. So, I, and my mind isn't changed. I'm still. I'm glad it was. Okay. Oh, there's more. Yeah. So I apologize. There's another well, that, after this. That gives us, yeah. And there's that's one more. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. This is what you were worried about. Mm -hmm. Well, on the other side, though, because that, that cement wall that the sails are sitting on isn't going anywhere. But mm -hmm. but this is the way, this is. The way it's going to be in each direction. You mm -hmm. hit this grass part. Well, if you look the to the far things. upper right, yeah. there's some barrier in there. It looks like bushes, maybe, it, or something. It it's not on the lower left, though. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe they can do that on both sides. The other person that's been involved in this is Bill Bill Hootery, our, our, our road and traffic and engineering guru of who's been pretty thoughtful. And there's been, this has taken time because we do want to get it right. Mm -hmm. um, there hasn't, we haven't rushed this, correct, Mark? It's been, there's a lot of entities yes. really putting. Yes, I mean, if it's the road commission property, we had to get lengthy permit process to get the um, signals, new signals up. And to just have them agree to let us do this in there right away was, was a major hurdle. Yeah. So just more background for you about the thinking and trying to get it right. Very attractive. Mm -hmm. Well, and if if this proves to be effective, that's the model for all up and down Big Beaver. Then, so this won't be an isolated median out there. This will be how the rest of them all tie in. So east and west will go together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got your name correct, Nichols, on this one? It's correct everywhere else. It's <laughs> okay. kind of a mistake. Okay. You want to go over the budget, or you yes. just want us to ask you questions? Well, I, I will quickly go over it. You know, we, we bring in approximately $160,000 in this fiscal year of tax revenue, and that's it's tax capture in this area. That's from when it was created in 2002, that increased tax valuation, and that's what we captured. Um, it, it has plateaued and is going to start going up in future, you know, next year in the budget, first budget year, 187000 191000 So it is going up. We have minor interest income. The one thing I really want to know is that, is that we, um, this, we dedicate 60% of the tax capture, the tax revenue, to operations for automation alley. And that's a hard 60%. But we have been allocating funds, we can see 2016 and ending the 2017 budget year, and then next year, starting July 1st, $125,000 will change. And that's money that's built up for the Move Across Troy project. So that's multiple years funding. And then going off in future years, we identify 53, excuse me, where infrastructure, $53,000 in the second and third year of the, uh, of the budget years. One thing I would like to note is that Automation Alley has come to me and asked if they could get assistance in doing parking lot repairs. And because it is a, a, a public type facility, we we can allocate dollars for it. In fact, we did give them substantial cash and payments when this body started to help build the building. Is that line then the line that will fund the project we just saw? Yes, this is 125000 Okay. Yep. This is the next fiscal year right here. And really, we just have some minor costs for tax tribunal, um, administrative services, about $5,000. And then the marketing is 17500 That's the foundation membership at Automation Alley, which is included in that 60% for operations for Automation Alley. With that, it's a pretty straightforward budget. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. And this will go to City Council for approval. And it's slated on May 8th, which is next Monday. We're budget to have a deficit this year of 45,000. And you are talking about right there. Here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything in particular it, driving that? Oh, man, you're, you're getting me here. Well, it's, I'm thinking it's the infrastructure is the biggest part. So this you said gets next trans year. This gets transferred, this money. Is yeah. transferred to the capital fund. Okay, so that's a yeah. that's a wash. Right, it goes away. It actually leaves this budget and goes to the capital budget. So the cash. So it's not really an expense. Correct. It's a funding source. Right, it's a transfer to a different fund. And it should really shouldn't be on the P and L then, right? Because it's capital. Right. Be depreciated then over time. Mm -hmm. 
It's a little bit confusing for me it is. too. Me too. Uh, finance yeah. guy, it, it makes it look like there's there's some some losses, but it's you know, your yeah. your funding ending balance and your beginning balance yeah. don't tie. That's a balance sheet item, not a P and L. Yeah. I think. You well, in governmental accounting is different. It's a different yeah. type of animal. I mean, we fund accounting. Is it possible to at least asterisk something, another asterisk to... We did that, what, yeah. three or four years ago, we had this question on the yeah. budget, right. and yeah. we fixed it through an asterisk, you're right. So if you would go back to that budget and use the same methodology, because I think we were comfortable with that after it. Okay. Yeah, yeah you. you want to be able to explain that. I remember the last time when we put the money aside to do Big Beaver. And it went we between years and, and yeah, it was. We had that question. So. Great. Okay. You would do that. And as we will, because of the agreement with the MEDC, it gives us 15 more years starting in 19. So we have about 18 years left on the life of this TIF district. So just one, one last question. You said that the infrastructure in 18 is what's paying for the project we just talked about. Where Where is the 17 amount going? Or has it gone? The 17 amount no. is being moved forward. Oh, gotcha. So it's no longer an expected. It's just going to be Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. It's just moving forward. Everybody copacetic now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we need to approve this? We need to yes. approve and, and ask the council to approve it. Yes. I'll so. make a motion to approve the 2018 budget um, yes. with the footnote that the 125 is a funding line. And it's the three year budget, so it's technically three three. 17, 18 through 19, 19. 20. <laughs> it's probably 18, 19, 20, right? Yeah. All right, I make a motion yep. to approve the 18, 19, 20 budget. Yep. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Further discussion, questions, comments? All those in favor of approving the budget as presented with the asterisk? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. If Altair builds additional structures, is that going to increase our revenue? I don't, if those four acres are within the CTP, it will. Mm -hmm. It's within the boundary? Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the valuation of the property will rise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we will get a piece of it. It's interesting because we're going to make this investment that will hopefully drive their investment that makes more of an investment, and it's the circle of life. It's a Ponzi scheme. I like the circle of life. I was all Lion Kinging, and you just go. But there, there it is. You know, it is that um, chicken and the egg kind of a thing that. Yeah, right. It's all good. Manager, I'm just wondering where is the development going to be? Because we, we do have a map of the. Uh, it's the four acres to the west and north of it their might property. Not be in it. I'm thinking it's not. It's yes, I'm thinking it's here. outside. That's what I was thinking. It's outside. Yeah, yeah, it's outside of the boundaries. Of the, yeah. That's what I thought. I thought oh. it was closer to John R. So, it's, yeah, John R. Which would be outside of the boundaries of mm -hmm. the LDFA. So. Okay. So are we in the old airport? Yes, yeah. we are the old airport. And so that's part of the sunrise. The yes, exactly. Okay. The unbuilt senior sunrise, area. Yeah. Okay. And there's also some unbuilt retail that wasn't as part of the PUD. Yeah. So if I Altair realize, bought that yeah. PUD, unbuilt okay. portion of the PUD. Which we talked about amending. That was a senior citizen thing, so we didn't, <laughs> we didn't do it. <laughs> So that's done. Any comments to end the day? I want to thank staff. I, and again, mm -hmm. thank you for your um, 
faith in me, but I want to thank staff for doing what you do to make us all look so good and so much. They make it easy Agreed. for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Appreciate it. It was great to have the subject matter expert here, too, for yeah. the yeah. project. So, I apologize. I didn't invite her to the meeting. <laughs> sure. yeah. You can't know everything. Yeah. It's hard to know where the questions are going to go, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I know it's not part of the LDF a per view, but I always like the two of you give what's happening in the city of Detroit. And it doesn't have to be here. I can talk to you after. No, go ahead. Sure. I don't want to, I don't want to take people's time otherwise. No, it's good. Um, you're noticing significant activity along Big Beaver, of right. course. Um, a lot of that comes on the hospitality side. Yeah. So uh, NEVs is the major one that's uh, closer to Somerset. McClure and Big Beaver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, McClure and Big Beaver, which should be opening in June. Right, we expect, uh, which will be good. Um, the, you can see continued construction now. This is the start of construction at 888. Must be we were the old VW right, right, building. Right, right. So they're starting off with a fidelity investments uh, building. That's the first building being constructed. And Cruz and Muir will be taken down. No, no Cruz and Muir stays. Okay. stays. Yeah, the, Morgan the, stays. The rumor is that Cruz and Muir is coming down. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, Morgan down. stays, Cruz and Muir stays. Melting yeah. uh, Pot stays too. Yeah, they're keeping all the existing. Good. Okay. Great. They're recladding the building uh, as well. Uh, you might be noticing that in the process. Um, and the second building they'll be built will be a Shake Shack. Most it's likely. in plan. I think they've received planning commission approval or it's nearing. No, it's nearing. Yeah. 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 And it's nearing. Future plans are for the new park structure to go in and for uh, additional for, for residential, uh, higher end residential along the Wilshire side and additional restaurant and retail development, yet to be named. And Sienna's going in the old McGregor still? Yeah, and then your, your sister body, the Brownfield cool. Redevelopment Authority, which we all advise <laughs> to, um, is that they're doing a Brownfield to tear that down and do assisted living and um, I, don't care, I can't remember on that mm -hmm. location. And also, that we're gonna, with the BRA, on the hard corner of Coolidge and Maple, the, the to tear down the office building. Um, the long-term owners sold that to John Ark and Jonah. And our Where Whole Foods currently is. Oh, yeah. Whole Foods is moving out. Kitty Corner in Birmingham. Which is funny, that has more contamination than the missile site because it's dry clean. <laughs> dry clean, it's 1967 yeah. on that site. Yeah, that would do it. Um, we, you know, we, we have applications in for uh, more hotels at Aloft, which was his preliminary approval at uh, I forget the name. Behind the PNC Tower. PNC Tower. PNC yeah. Tower. Yeah. We have applications in for for um, a hotel home to home two, which is which is um, trying to describe what it's behind. It's a weird location. It's, it's on the west side of Crooks, Crooks. at Wilshire. Yeah. So oh. behind right. Brooklyn Pizza and uh, Potbelly. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So that's the facility process. on Coolidge Road. Is storage another storage facility on Coolidge Road possible? Long um, Lake. There's one on Rochester Long Road going up. And Rochester Road is yeah. under construction yeah. right now. Yeah. You're thinking of the one uh, south of Maple uh, along Correct. Coolidge. Correct. Which there's one there, and I think they're talking about potentially expanding, but not I got the owner of, of the one on Maple. Okay. Mm -hmm. And probably one of the biggest things that has occurred recently is the sale of uh, 5505 Corporate Drive up in North Troy. Um, that was owned by Friedman, yeah. and they sold that building to Oakland Community Mental Health. I saw that, yeah, um, that's true. So Oakland Community Mental Health, um, unfortunately, doesn't pay taxes on it, <laughs> uh, but they will be bringing about 250 employees into there. Uh, they will also be subleasing space to for-profit entities, which will go on tax rolls. Uh, which will be nice. So yeah, there's still room for another. Looks like they're building yeah. another facility in and around that corridor, that area. Is there another construction project? Oh, 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 oh. you mean it's taking forever? What's that? Retail, the retail center, which is they were moving dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, and Crooks at the end of the uh, the yes, exit. Yes, right, yes, right. Yeah, moving dirt. That's going to be McDonald's initially and a retail wow. center. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Good. Another, I think, okay, across the street from there is the Met Hotel. Mm -hmm. We had met, Sienna had purchased that property. We, I thought it would be under demolition. <coughs> and it's not, I don't know why. We also have met with um, um, 
River going south of Maple, directly south of MGR Theater, mm -hmm. there's the Federal Express facility, and then once was a, the Big vacant grocer mm -hmm. forever, but it's been demolished. It looks like the um, Herb, not Herb family, Herb's, Herb's family is, it has an agreement with SR Jacobson and apartment builders for that location. It would be a brownfield also. There's a, there's a leaking there's a leaking gas tank on the Federal Express site, and you can use the brownfield to for demolition purposes. Those are the most significant things. Yeah, that's like 17 oh. acres. Yeah. It's, and yeah, it's you said hard. residential on the west side of Wilshire, mm -hmm. higher end residential, like behind. It's part of 888 West Big Beaver. Yes, about 250 units of higher oh, end residential. And a parking deck on Wilshire and a parking deck, oh, which would serve the entire. No, it's it's, uh, it's an apartment. Kind of oh, gotcha. They got three or four stories, right? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And the ever-present question about Kmart headquarters. No, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> only only what they said last August. Yeah. Which is that a vague indication that, that they're something looking is at coming. It. Yeah. yeah. Did they say multi-purpose too? I thought. Remember any? I don't think said really anything. They didn't say. Okay. It was. I was just glad that they were talking at all at that time. So. Yeah. I live right behind there. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Wait for it. That's your neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any uh, anything heard from on the Magna property? The old Magna property. They. Yeah. That's Their various right. requests were denied by the ZBA. Yeah. And it's not done yet, though, because we have a meeting set up with the attorney in a couple of weeks. So. Yeah. Okay. They're but nothing was options. filed. No, nothing yet. There were FOIA requests, I know that. Yeah. So they're probably. The, it's still within the appellate time period for the ZBA denial, so we're waiting until that's done. Mm -hmm. The proposal for two hotels. Oh, okay. Uh, behind the Magna, just to the north of the old Magna site. It's now NSI. Right. On the Penn Right, right. Okay. Well, that summarizes it all. Yeah. And there's always, I can't believe it, but there's always homes being built in the city, which you think we're, we're, we're built out, but we have these very. You find these little nooks and crannies. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Well, three three here. Yeah. I, I see it all around. around. Yep. You know, the question that comes up a lot, maybe maybe you guys hear it too, is across from the Nature Center, the greenhouse nursery that was torn down. That's going to be homes? is, Or do we know? I don't think we know. I think we know. Okay. The greenhouse isn't down yet. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I was by there this morning. It's not all gone. It's well, but I mean, there. it's... The, the panels are gone. Yeah, the, the foundation, the parking lot, all of that right. is still Right, but there. I mean, the building so, itself, when you drive Oh, yeah, they're going to do something with it. We, but we don't know why. There's all sorts of rumors in that, which is, and, and when you say we don't know, people look at you like, yes, you must, but sometimes we just don't. That property goes back a long way. Yeah. It's a big jump around. That's a big, a big area. Yeah. I was at uh, an event at the Marriott, and it was well attended, so I was up on the upper deck of the parking structure, and I glanced over and realized there's still a ball field. It's There's nothing around it, no stands or anything like that, but there's still a ball field there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have a pickup game there anytime you want to. <laughs> yeah. Pretty Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Doesn't look like it's got a lot of use. Talk, talk to Andy Appleby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got his hands full with the... Yeah, uh, probably. Jimmy John's Stadium. Jimmy John's Stadium. Yeah. All right. Hearing no other discussion, this meeting stands adjourned. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody.